Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to session 24 of Principles of Management course. Students, we have now reached towards the stage where we need to understand the nuances of the critical positions in the organization that is leadership. I will narrate a story before I proceed telling you what is leadership. Once a group of workers along with the leaders, they were paving a path in a dense jungle and they wanted to go to the other side of that forest so as to develop a port over there. <clears throat> Days and weeks went by and they digged the right path according to them. They were moving ahead and suddenly one day one worker climbed up the tree and shouted to everyone, wrong way. Can you tell why did he shout that and why, how could he shout that wrong way? It was because he was sitting at the top of the other workers. From that top position, he could see holistically downwards and see what is the path that the followers are digging, whether it is right or wrong. So that is the essence of leadership that makes it different from management. Management, what believes in doing the things rightly, other, on the other hand, leadership is doing the right things. So let us try to understand this concept of leadership in detail. It will be in three sessions, leadership part one and two and three. And during this journey of understanding leadership, let us try to find out what are different styles and theories of leadership along with the process of leadership and other concepts related to it. So leadership is the process of influencing people to work hard to accomplish their organization development and individual goals. So basically leadership is nothing but a process of persuasion. Leading as a managerial function involves building commitment and enthusiasm amongst people so that they work willingly and effectively towards the task accomplishment. The success of leadership, as we saw in the story, someone who is sitting at the top can see the vision behind or below, is the ability of the managers to make things happen in the way they wanted it to happen. Leadership involves the use of influence to get things or tasks accomplished through the group members. Now the effectiveness of leadership students usually depends on relationship between who all? Between leaders or probably the managers and their followers or subordinates and along with that the situations, environment or circumstances also play a major role. So these are the parties to make leadership highly effective. Leadership is very complex task, it needs to be developed through training, experience and analysis. Power and influence are the terms you closely associated with the concept of leadership. For example, leaders need power to influence the activities of their group members. If power is missing, there are greater chances that the followers will not listen or obey to the leader because they know that their leader cannot give him neither the rewards nor the punishment. So the power of giving reward and punishment enables a leader to influence the subordinates. Here, power refers to the capability of the people to influence or change the behavior or action of members of the group. Now, influence means what? Influence means any action of leader that causes changes in the behavior or attitude of an individual or the group. Influence also means a kind of direct dynamic relationship that prevails amongst the people and such influences should be multidimensional. Along with that they should be non-coercive 
and reciprocal in nature. For instance, managers influence and also get influenced by the action of the subordinate. So, when this scenario takes place, we say that it is a reciprocal relationship. Let us move on to the formal definitions of leadership by James Stoner. Leadership is the process of directing. So, it is one of the managerial functions also that we have discussed in the initial sessions and influencing the task related to group member activities. Leader is someone who can influence others and who has managerial authority according to Stephen B. Robbins. Students, let us now understand what are various characteristics and features of leadership. So, the first characteristic and feature that we should emphasize upon is the goal based activity. What is goal based activity? We understand that every organizational department must have or the organization altogether should have a goal. An aim of leadership should be aim of leadership should be accomplishment of the goals and it is a goal based activity. So, that is the characteristic. Second characteristic is that it is a power based activity, power which the leaders position possess and the greater the power, the greater is the leaders influence on others. What do we mean by greater power? In the hierarchy of the organization, there is, there are many levels. So, someone can be assistant manager, supervisor, manager or managing director. So, whom do you think quickly answer students, whom do you think will have the highest power? The highest power will be with the managing director. So, we can say here the power is greater or greatest amongst the other levels of the organization. Then pervasive nature of leadership also makes it a unique phenomenon. Leadership is needed at all levels. We, I have already explained this term pervasive in previous sessions also. So, that means that it cannot be confined to the top level or certain positions in the organization. It is existent at all levels. Leadership is persuasive. By persuasive, we mean that it creates influence. So, inducing individuals or groups to pursue organizational goals and objective is the task of a persuasive leadership and it has to be non-coercive along with that non-coercive influence should be given or should be put on the other managers. It is an interactive process as leadership is a dynamic and interactive process involving three dimensions. We have already discussed these three dimensions. Can you answer quickly? Three dimensions are leader, follower and situation and these three dimensions in this each one gets influenced by each other. After studying the features of leadership, let us move on to have a discussion on the concepts of leader versus management. What can be the different students between a leader and a manager? The leader is the one who strategizes, who decides the vision of the organization, who decides the goals and mission of organization, who directs the path of the followers. On the other hand, manager is the one who executes the decision taken by the leadership. Manager is the one who has to focus more on the administrative part. Though manager also may behave as a leader at certain point in times. If you can recall Henry Mintzberg's roles of management that we did in the initial sessions of principles of management, where the manager was supposed to take up the role of an entrepreneur and a leader as well and the symbolic head. So, certain situations may prompt a manager to take up the leadership role. But otherwise, manager is more on obeying the orders and executing the orders of the leader and leader has to take up the critical position of telling 
what is right and what is not going fine in the organization or maybe to decide upon some new uh, path for the organization some strategies what can be the strategy students leader may decide upon strategies like expansion maybe for integration vertical that is forward or backward leader may decide upon to have a turnaround strategy restructuring the organization depending upon how the organization is moving and how the environmental pressures are being put on the management or leader so leader is viewed as someone different from management by many management experts according to them management works in the system whereas leadership works on the system so this is the basic difference though it can be an english language difference in and on but it makes a huge difference between the two concepts and the powers associated with the two concepts so generally leadership can exist even for completely unorganized groups but managers need roles specified by organizational structure moving forward let's have a quick understanding of leadership and management differences so creating an agenda if the activity is to create an agenda here the management will do the planning and budgeting part on the other hand the leadership will talk about establishing the direction and what do we mean by planning and budgeting management or a manager will establish detailed steps time tables achieving results allocating resources and necessary which are necessary to make or reach to these results results which are already being given in the form of goals while in leadership it focuses on developing the vision for future often the distant future distant future here means long term vision and strategies for producing the changes needed to achieve that vision so focus here is on strategies when the activity is developing a human network for achieving the agenda because we have created the agenda now we want human network or human element to organize or to do that task in that case the management or manager's job is to organize and do staffing and if i may recall students we have discussed these in detail the concept of planning organizing and staffing by now while the leader has to align people in the organization together what is alignment say if this is a magnet and these are the iron iron fillings now what happens with iron fillings they have to get attached to this magnet and this is what we call it as an alignment and this alignment is done by the leadership so while developing the human network the manager has to establish some structure which we call as organization structure for accomplishing plan requirements staffing needs and delegating responsibility authority for carrying out the plans also it these policies and plans and procedures which are made they help the people to give them guidance and creating the methods or systems to monitor the implementation why to monitor the implementation so that we can find out if there is any error on the path and we can rectify it on the other hand leadership focuses on communicating the direction by words deeds to everyone whose cooperation may be needed to influence the creation of teams and coalitions that understand the visions and strategies and accept their validity here the alignment of people is done when we talk about communication it is also done through storytelling storytelling of those successful managers of the company who were previously taking charges of it and they have taken the company to greater heights we also call that as heroic stories in management field the next agenda can be executing the plan as you can see we are moving forward in this direction we created the plan we assigned the human resource to it now we are executing it for that we need to control and problem solve this is yet to be discussed as a managerial function in forthcoming sessions we would be doing that so in controlling monitoring results versus planning in some detail identifying the deviations and then planning and organizing to solve this problem which is done by the manager on the other hand when while executing plan comes up the leadership focuses on motivating and inspiring the 
people in organization motivation which we have just finished in the previous three sessions it energizes people to overcome major political bureaucratic resource barriers by how by satisfying the basic but often unfulfilled human needs you can remember here mr maslow who gave us the need hierarchy theory and also mcleland who gave us different need acquired need theory and finally once we have executed the plan as you do so also in your personal lives it produces degree of predictability and order and has the potential to produce consistent major results so here how do you see the results results can be seen for example for customers always being on time for stock stakeholders being on budget these are the manifestations of the outcomes while in leadership it produces change often to a dramatic degree has a potential to produce extremely useful change for example new products that customers want new approaches and labor relations that help them to have more competitive environment so that means we can say that students that the activities are same for both cadres be it a manager or be it a leader but the the way they handle it differs a lot between because their opinion their work profile or their stature in the organization differs so we can here discuss few pointers which you also may need tomorrow when you join organization to be successful as manager you must possess both managerial as well as leadership skills so understandably people who develop skills in leadership role and managerial function what will be the benefits to them the benefits to them will be they will have a long term vision and they will always remain futuristic they look outwards towards the larger organization they influence others beyond the groups their focus is on vision and achieving the vision through values and creating motivating environment and be politically astute and think in terms of change and renewal so all these characteristics make an individual a very effective leader and a manager now that we have talked about various features of characteristics of leadership and the differentiation between the leadership and the manager let's move on and understand the process of leadership that takes place in the organization first step is to develop a strategic vision what is developing a strategic vision that is the futuristic path communicating the vision to others here others means managerial and non managerial employees building trust among members and the other members in the organization this is incorrect so building trust amongst members of the organization that means creating a cohesive environment and then showing the ways and means to achieve the vision so this is going to be the strategy that they build to achieve the goal let us discuss these steps in detail developing a strategic vision so this is the stage of leadership process which involves creation of vision through the formulation of vision a leader decides what the organization wants to become here we can say that a leader's vision helps in establishment to have a strong organizational identity and that becomes its vision vision has to be well formulated so that it enables the organization to plan for a long term direction and it also indicates if it it has a strong identity it indicates the company's desire to reach to a specific position tomorrow maybe the vision can be that the organization wants to be a leader in the world in carrying out this particular activity 
Second stage is communicating the vision to others. So once the vision is formulated, it becomes necessary for leaders to communicate it to members of the organization. So since vision is prepared in the present based on the past for future, which is very important. It has to look into all aspects and it is built for future. So it acts as a bridge between all these parameters, past, present and future. Now you have to inculcate trust amongst the members that yes, this vision can be accomplished, it is doable and it is much needed as per the environment outside. So leaders need to use persuasion skills and techniques to secure the cooperation and commitment of the members of for the vision. Leaders can gain the trust and confidence of members through their technical expertise, risk taking attitude and self sacrificing and unconventional behavior. So these should be the qualities in the leader so that he can persuade people and bring develop a trust amongst them. No vision students always remember can be created by coercion. You cannot, by pressure you cannot create, you cannot get the vision implemented. So generally the members adopt a vision to work towards it and they believe that such a vision serves not only the organizational objectives but also the objectives for the members of it, their personal goals. Next in line is showing the ways and means to achieve the vision. Here the role modeling, empowerment and unconventional tactics of the leader can inspire members to work towards fulfillment of the organizational vision. Leader, as a leader you can motivate the individuals, you can give them incentives and you can tell them how they can move in a unified ma manner towards organizational success. We need to have a shared vision, shared vision which is a common vision for all. If you are a manager, I am, I am a super supervisor, we all or someone is a CEO, all three should have the common shared vision and should strive to achieve that. It is when a vision is shared, it is capable of animating, inspiring and transforming the purpose into the action. So we have a exhibit which shows the leadership development initiatives at a very private sector organization that is Wipro. Let us see what are leadership development initiatives at Wipro. So it mentions here that success of any organization in developing leadership at different levels depends on its ability to make the leaders understand that their value lies not only in managing teams and organizational activities but, but also in inspiring others and implementing strategic vision. Also to have the culture of excellence in the organization. So the spirit of Wipro which is the core of organization guides the action of its leaders and the team. Wipro manifests itself in three important forms. First intensity to win. That is the spirit they have. Act with sensitivity be inclusive all the time and be careful about other stakeholders of the organization. Unyielding integrity which is a very strong pillar for the organization. The objectives of many leadership programs at Wipro are to gear up the managers to take up challenge of successfully heading large and strong teams. In this regard Wipro has developed a unique competency framework called Wipgyor. And what is Wipgyor students? Can you guess quickly? So Wipgyor stands for Wipro's career bands gives you opportunities and responsibilities. How wonderful. Here you can grow your career by seeking the responsibilities and encashing or seizing the opportunities which are available to you. So Wipgyor defines the behavioral competency that are to be dominated, demonstrated by organizational members in general and leaders in particular. These competencies are usually defined role wise and members are evaluated on these competencies at the time of performance appraisal. Why are they evaluated? So as to stimulate the role based growth. So I am sure students now you understand what is the strength of leadership programs or leadership development in any organization.
let's move further and see how leadership and organization life cycle interact with us. So in its evolution process, each organization goes through different stages and forms before it becomes matured. So if I may tell you, this is the life cycle graph for any organization. Here it is the initial or the beginning stage. Here it is the mature stage and this is the point where it is at the sorry it is the decline phase and here it is at its peak performance so during this life cycle how leadership moves ahead so each growth phase of the organization may require managers to adopt different leadership style how can we say that at each growth phase manager requires different style of management because the strategies at different phases of evolution of life cycle may be very different at the time when you are beginning or initiating the organization you need to focus more on the customer requirements and establishing a brand for yourself when you move on to your peak performance that means your brand is already established you have to now see into more of administrative work because of the magnitude of the work which has spread now and during the decline phase you have to see that how to wind up and move towards the closure of the organization in an amicable and peaceful manner because of course the organization also has the important critical factor that is human resource you may get rid of other physical assets but when it comes to human resources you have to see that they are properly outplaced and it the decline of the organization is not giving a suffering to the human life who's been serving to the organization from larger or past times so in the first phase, for instance, the leaders are required to be highly, highly individualistic and innovative with high entrepreneurial spirit. And this primarily because this phase is often viewed as creativity phase and organizations mostly achieve growth through creativity. They have to come up with new ideas, new ideas so that they can attract the customer to them. So this is highly challenging phase for any organization. In the second phase called the direction phase, leaders are expected to provide a strong direction to the organizational members. Authority at this stage is largely centralized. Why? Because the leader has to give the direction. So he keeps all authority to himself and members look to their leaders for direction and frequent guidance. At this stage, effective direction contributes to further growth of the organization. So this further growth takes the organization to the next phase. That is the third phase where delegation phase starts. Why delegation phase? Why decentralization phase? Because now systems are established. Now the organization is moving at a steady pace and the administrative work has to be taken in control. So here leaders need to optimally delegate the power to their subordinates so that the latter have adequate autonomy to perform their jobs efficiently. When the organization becomes large in size during this phase, delegation helps the faster decision making and better accountability at different level. I think students you know it very well, I should have asked this as a question to you people rather than telling you that what are the benefits of delegation of management. In the fifth phase, organization should seek to grow further through proper coordination. Coordination, what is it? It is a sense of management. Why coordination? Because now the magnitude of work has been expanded and it's very large. So thus, coherence between various departments has to be done. So understandably this phase can be called as coordination phase and the role of leader is that of a watchdog as they assume the role of protector or a guardian in the organization. 
So in this phase, the participative approach of leadership facilitates the growth of the organization. In other words, the organization seeks to grow through elaboration at this stage. Leaders should enhance their interpersonal skills and adopt team oriented approach. So these are the things the leader has to do for organizational goals and leaders should have to be more imaginative and ingenious in their approach towards the organizational expansion. So these are various phases of organizational life cycle and in their relation with the leadership. Let us see now when a leader is going through the leadership phase or leadership role, what kind of different phases in the organizational life cycle the leader has to go through along with the roles they have to perform. So we have already discussed these different phases of leadership and now they have to go through we have to understand different roles that they perform during these different phases of life cycle of organization the first role that the leader performs is that of a champion have you heard of a champion who is a champion students a champion is in general terms the one who is a winner who is a defender of new business and as it is a fraught in numerous dangers. So he is the one who wins over the other competitors. The other role is the tank commander. Tank commander, you know tank commander in army who takes up in charge of giving the direction of the tank. So here the leader tells the organization or the business to move forward in the next So, like a tank commander, he tells where to move ahead. Then he has to also behave as a housekeeper. Who is a housekeeper? Housekeeper who maintains a balance in the organization and makes the organization stable. This is the role leader performs in housekeeper role and also he has to behave as a lemon squeezer. Have you squeezed lemon ever students? What do you do in that? You squeeze out from lemon, uh, lemon the maximum output. And this is what the manager has to perform the role. Why? Before the organization moves towards or goes towards, go towards the decline. So these are four different roles tomorrow if you want to become an entrepreneur and you want to start up your own business in that case you have to perform the role of champion, tank commander, housekeeper and a lemon squeezer. Let me introduce to you students various recent trends in leadership approaches. So though many forms of leadership are in existence, a few forms have recently gained importance due to their utility value to managers in present context. And what are these? These forms are ethical leadership, strategic leadership and cross-cultural leadership. Before we go on for a detailed discussion on these, the terminology itself suggests you what the leadership trend is all about, what it is focusing on. It is focusing on ethics, strategy and cross-cultural management. Let us see what is ethical leadership. Ethics refer to ethical principles that determine the behavior of an individual or group and they are nothing but the code of conduct. They are the values that individual has to follow. You have been listening to the value of honesty is the best policy since your childhood. What is that? That is the value system which is being taught to you. So similarly, the leadership have to follow, leadership has to follow certain ethical norms. So the term ethics is an abstract concept and can be measured only through principles and practices. You cannot quantify ethics. It is a qualitative term. It is adopted by leaders in dealing with their subordinates. Of late, there is growing interest among management in ethical leaderships and organizations have already begun to introduce high ethical standards for 
for their managers to prevent any ethical misconduct and consequent loss to the organizational goodwill because if any misconduct is done by any manager it directly affects to the goodwill of the organization in a negative way. Under the ethical leadership managers normally identify certain behaviors and motives like honesty, trustworthiness, fairness, altruistic as representing ethical leadership and they have to follow these motives, these behaviors themselves so that they can set a role model for the managers below. Value based management which means behavior based on ethical principles and value is a good formula for long term health and success of the organization. What is the gain out of it students? Gain is trust in trust that you build in customers mind if you are an ethical organization. You may have to been in initially you may not have higher profitable gains, but eventually when you develop this trust in the mind of the customer you can have larger volumes of business done. So, it is essentially a prerequisite for both the individual success and organizational efficiency. So, however, when individuals they practice ethical values within an organization, it does not mean the entire organization is ethical. So, only when students entire organization practices the fairness and justice in systematic way, then we can say that it is an ethical organization. So, it has to be throughout the organize it has to run throughout the organization rather than being practiced only by one or two members. Now that we are discussing ethical leadership I think it is very important for you to understand what are different types of ethics. The first type of ethic is the descriptive ethics. Do you know what is descriptive ethics? you may not be knowing. So, it is mostly concerned with justice and fairness of the process. Whatever process you are following, process in the organization for distribution, process for production, process for maintenance of physical assets and human assets. So, any process that you are following in the organization should be just justice and fairness oriented. It further involves an empirical inquiry into actual rules and standards of the particular job or particular group sorry. It can also mean the understanding of ethical reasoning process for example, a study on ethical standards of business leader in India can be an example of descriptive ethics. Then we have normative ethics. What is normative ethics? It is different from the descriptive ethics. Descriptive ethics students focused on the process, normative ethics focused on focuses on the end result. So, it says that there has to be fairness in the end result of any decision making process. It is concerned largely with possibility of justification it shows whether something is good bad right or wrong. So, normative ethics cares about what one really ought to do and it, deter it is determined by reasoning and moral argument why that person is supposed to do this particular act there is a rationale behind it a logic behind it. Then comes the next category of ethics that is interpersonal ethics. Under the category of interpersonal ethics, it is mainly concerned with the fairness of interpersonal relationship between leaders and their followers. So, here high amount of honesty is expected. It refers to the style of managers and carrying out their day to day interactions with their subordinates. The manager may treat the employees either with honor and dignity or disdain or disrespect. Both will have their different effects. Honor will get the leader a kind of trust, faith and regard, regard for his word. If you give honor to your subordinate, he will reciprocate in the same manner and will regard what you want him to do. 
but if you disrespect and disdain probably the individual will also take all the commands that you give as a leader very casually and may not abide by what you expect them to do when it comes to ethical issues in organization there are certain approaches that need to be followed so though many leaders are interested in acting in an ethical manner they often face dilemma in determining what constitutes ethical actions for instance organizational politics is viewed as an unethical act by many organization but yet it is very much widespread not only in our country but probably across the globe so indeed the difficulty surrounding ethics makes it hard to distinguish from right to wrong however leaders can always ensure that their policy should satisfy as many persons as possible in the organization and similarly they should provide for the recognition of rights of individuals while determining the ethical proportion of organizational policies so policy has to be highly ethical so what are different approaches students first is utilitarian approach what is utility ut utilitarian approach in this approach the managerial policy is based on the philosophy of utmost good for the greatest number of people as much as possible the ethical policy ethical quality policy and practice is should work for well being of as many as possible for instance decisions like layoff in organization you know what is layoff layoff is asking people to sit down and the pay is not given to them during the time of laid off period it is a very difficult situation for people who are laid off especially in the seasonal factories when there is no job for certain times maybe 6 months in a year or so the employees are laid off which is which becomes very difficult and tough so at this time if the organization can justify some kind of benefit to the individuals that will help in giving well being of to these people and that will be counted as one of the approaches to leadership or ethical leadership next is approach based on rights so this approach is based on the principle that organization should respect individuals dignity and rights it's not that the person has joined the organization so he is a bounded laborer he is an individual and he has his own fundamental rights need to be safeguarded so each employee is entitled to be treated with due respect and be should be provided with safe working conditions which are very hygienic and friendly to his health a reasonable and equitable pay system and unbiased performance evaluation system so an individual's privacy and integrity should also be respected by the organization micromanagement nowadays is going on but micromanagement then disturbs also at times the privacy of the individual approach based on justice so focus of this approach is on equal treatment adoption of due procedures and consistency in application of policies and rules there should not be any biased approach so the focal point of this approach is fairness in ensuring the balance between the benefits and burdens of the job what we have to do we have to maintain a balance between these two concepts such as you have to maintain a balance between compensation and performance or maybe compensation and job attendance understood students let's move further now let us try to find out answer to something called as strategic 
leadership. Leadership literature earlier focused on leadership roles performed by supervisory and middle levels. Now, strategic leadership can be defined as the complexity of both the organization and its environment to lead change in organization so as to achieve and maintain superior alignment. This change will lead to superior alignment between organization and its environment. So, if this is the organization, this is the environment, you have to bring in change so that there is a parity between the two. So, since strategic leadership clearly relates to the role of top manager, management, who, managers who are part of this leadership, they actually influence the overall effectiveness of the large organizations. So, what is strategy, strategic leadership? To effectively discharge the strategic leadership function, the manager needs to have a clear, complete, and critical understanding of the organization. So, it pertains to managers knowledge and analytical skills. Now, if I may recall the story that I narrated in the beginning, when the worker climbed up on the tree and viewed that the followers are going in the, on the wrong path, it was now the gain of knowledge that he could see from the top what is the path being dict. So, thus the manager must, the leader must have all the three characteristics. They should be also familiar with vision, mission, ethos, history, strengths and weaknesses of the organization which caters to the knowledge part for a leader. Strategic leaders must also be aware about two more things which are the internal and external environment of the organization very well. They should also know the nature and kind of alignment that is existing between the organization and the environment. So, here the key takeaway is that the leader is a person who becomes a leader because he has these two traits and characteristics in depth. So, while making strategic decisions at par as the part of strategic leadership, managers can adhere to certain guidelines. These are the path uh, guiding statements for the leaders. What they have to do? First, they have to have a careful consideration of long term and short term goals, objectives and priorities of the organization. Students take these things very seriously. Try to remember these things because tomorrow you have to follow this when you join organization at leadership positions. These are the key learnings from this session. As a leader, you have to evaluate the existing strengths and weaknesses of the organization and that is going to be a continuous process. It is not a one time process as a leader, it is a continuous process. You have to keep core competencies in focus because they are the ones whom which you can encash on. You can encash on course competencies, improve the core competencies and win over the competitor. You have to assess the need for major changes in the strategies already discussed about it in the previous slide. Identifying the prospective strategies, existing strategies when changed they can be converted into prospective strategies. You also have to assess the possible outcomes of the strategy. So, here you have to have a far sightedness or sorry four sightedness that how the strategy is going to give the outcomes and this will purely depend upon three factors your knowledge as a leader, your analytical skills which we have discussed earlier and along with that your creative ability. To have a vision. So, choosing the appropriate strategy after wider consultation with other strategies is very important. So, we have discussed two approaches, one was ethical leadership, the other was strategic leadership. Now, we are moving on to the cross cultural leadership. Students, it is very interesting topic to understand cross culture. What is cross culture? Can you answer me that? Cross culture is when you cross your nation's boundary, you enter into another culture. 
But in our country, it is not only about crossing the nation's boundary. If we cross even our state boundary, we see that cultural differences occur, which is a very healthy sign for the growth of our nation altogether. We have many best practices and best value systems, ethical norms across the country which we can imbibe. And same goes with the leadership also when it comes to cross-cultural matter. The cross-cultural matter deals with different kind of value systems, beliefs, norms that different societies play or different societies follow across the globe. Once the leader is taken the charge as a strategic uh, manager or the strategic, uh, strategic building person, the resultant is that he must follow the practices which are across different cultures or he must study first the practices across different cultures and come out with the best cluster of high performance work practices. So let us see how a leader behaves in a cross-cultural setup or what exactly we mean by the cross-cultural leadership. Here the cultural values tend to influence and shape the perception, cognition and preference of the organization members and teams and cultural value means which differs from place to place. and thus bringing in change in preferences of organizational members from one place to the other. So consequently, there will be wide differences in behavioral norms of members across the cultures. Someone who is in the western part of the globe will have a different set of cultural norms. So thus their behavior will be different as compared to someone who's in, who is in the eastern part of the globe. Thus, it becomes essential for managers to adopt cross-cultural leadership or shared leadership. This is widely prevalent in organization which di with diverse cultural settings. Diverse cultural settings because you have your subsidiary units across the globe or maybe in multi nations. So, the advancement in communication technology and transportation is what is supporting it. Supports what? It supports cross-cultural leadership and it has increased more interaction at cross-cultural level. So, the need for development of cross-cultural leadership has arisen due to rapid social transformation and enhanced access to education and increased labor mobility and changing workforce profile of the country. For example, you have a proportion of women, then you have religious minorities you have specially abled fellow members of the society. So, such workforce has increased dramatically and this is a direct challenge for the managers as they have to deal with culturally and racially diverse work group. Thus, there is growing need amongst organizations to develop cross-cultural leadership amongst their members. Many firms are now compelled to initiate new gender specific and target based facility policies to serve the interest of different sections of the employees. The primary challenge of cultural leadership is what students is to motivate organization members of culturally diverse group how challenging it is people with different thought processes need to be motivated at the same time. So then having same motivational policies may not work and you have to have a good mix of different motivational concerns for the diverse work group. Then we move on to leadership succession planning. What is succession planning students? Anyone? who can tell me what is succession planning? Okay, let me answer this. Succession planning is when you identify a potential successor for your 
position that you feel is a critical leadership position and it is going to get vacant in near future or maybe if it is not going to get vacant in near future it takes couple of years to develop a successor for the organization successor who should know that how the organization is currently strategizing and what are the new capabilities you want in the person who's going to be the successor who can match up to the capabilities of the predecessors or the persons who were successors earlier so leadership succession planning here a change in executive leadership at some point of time will definitely take place it is unavoidable so it is critical and tough exercise for organization to find the right replacement for those in the top levels of management at the right time so an effective succession plan can facilitate the organization in being prepared for any kind of as i mentioned planned or unplanned absence in the top position so one has to be one organization has to be already ready already always ready with the successor so the purpose of management or leadership succession plan is what to ensure to the extent possible that there are number of competent managers who can very well cater to the future needs of the organization so succession planning is actually a process through which organization plans for and appoints a top level executives it usually requires suitable managers to fulfill the vacancies caused due to what can be the reasons why the successor uh, vacancies are created it usually is created because of retirement promotion maybe death resignation and transfer of any manager from the existing position so by implementing a succession management program that is transparent again this is a characteristic of the succession management program and equitable that is you are giving chance to the more competent person rather than giving any nepotism in the organization so this also enables a workforce to position itself to adequately face any kind of situation that might ar arise in organization account of management changes succession planning is also capable of reducing the performance variations in key roles reducing attrition among top performance and encouraging high internal recruitment the concept of succession planning has gathered momentum momentum even in indian companies and many top companies in india have chalked out systematic plans for identifying and grooming the talent and eventually take over the top positions in india for example a few years back lnt one of the leading uh, engineering companies declared the top 10% of its executives as stars and for them lnt developed a fast track career path which is highly commendable it's quite motivating motivating so in course of time these executives replaced the senior managers when they retired so what is the need for succession planning students in globalized economy the scarcity of people qualified for important leadership positions has become one of the foremost challenges facing the management today so companies having an acute shortage of talent especially at top levels of management this is because the demand for able experienced manager is often exceeds their supply so the several factors that have contributed the, to the situation are as follows why we need succession planning is growth of the organization early retirement scoping up with multiple competency requirements and poaching this becomes the reason why we need succession planning in the organization these are the reasons why succession planning is required students so these managers should possess skills in addition to conventional skills and knowledge such as leadership motivational communication and behavioral skills so it has to become the successor in the organization and it is then becomes a challenge and difficult for the organization to get sufficient number of good managers with these qualities hence organization depends critically on succession planning to develop managers with complex skills and abilities students this was all about the introduction of leadership i have referred to this bibliography for your reference you may also see this books 
and this is all for leadership introduction we shall be taking forward this concept in the next session of leadership further thank you so much